Your former life was in a bliss of ignorance, until you've awakened to the darkness waiting on the doorstep of our fragile dimension. Something terrible left its eons old slumber, and the reality, as we knew it, collapsed. The city of Arkham was pulled to somewhere not of this world, and its residents are in the shadows of true terror. As a survivor of this catastrophe, you should investigate the strange occurrences in the city and survive the rising darkness physically and mentally, if possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my new Let's Play. My name is Sipiros and this is Stygian, the Reign of the Old Ones. Finally, finally I get to play this game. The first time I tried was about six months ago, but unfortunately the game simply froze after a certain white flash very early on in the game, every single time without fail. So I couldn't play it until that got fixed, and I think I know what caused it. I was still using Windows 7 at the time, and I switched to Windows 10 like a month ago. I tried the game again last weekend and, lord and behold, it worked flawlessly. I once again apologize that it took me this long to start this let's play. And of course, I'll play the character some of you voted for in the poll about a half, about a half a year ago. And in case there are people watching who don't know what Stitchy and Reign of the Old Ones is, it's a Lovecraftian horror role-playing game taking place in HP Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos, funded on Kickstarter in June 2016, developed by Turkish indie developer called Cardic Games, and the game was released exactly one year ago in September 2019. I think it was 26th uh, of, sep of, of September, and I happen to be one of the backers of the crowdfunding campaign. Despite the game having been out for a full year, this is going to be a blind let's play or let's say 90% blind, because I did play through the demo that was provided during the campaign. So, 90% blind let's play. I've been avoiding spoilers at all costs, but I have heard that this game was surprisingly short, with some content having been allegedly cut, and many felt like they were left hanging, not getting a satisfying ending. So at least I know not to have too high expectations, I suppose. I don't mind short role-playing games as long as the story and setting are intriguing and the gameplay feels good, and most importantly, it has replay value. Like Obsidian's Tyranny does. Hell, I may even make a second playthrough in the future with a completely different character and make different decisions to see how much a second playthrough can differ from the first one. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself, so without any further delay, let's finally start our new Lovecraftian horror adventure through the streets of ruined Arkham. And we are going to start by creating our own character. So we can select the gender of course, and we are going to go with male this time. And then we can select the character's age, and this is perhaps one of the most interesting uh, choices in the game, because I can't think of any other role-playing game where you can, where you can uh, choose the age of your character. And, and in this game, uh, age actually matters, because young and old characters do have their own benefits, but also disadvantages. Young characters are in the physical prime, but lack the experience of all the characters, meaning that they start the game with a bonus with, with a bonus point in either physique, agility or senses, but is penalized with two less skill points, and the old characters are the opposite. Old characters are in physical decline, but have acquired more life experience than younger characters. So they start the game with a penalty in either physique, agility or senses, but is awarded with two more uh, skill points. And adult characters are the kind of the default mode. So if you don't want, so if you don't want to mess around with the, with the old, old or, or young characters' advantages or disadvantages, you can just uh, pick the old, uh, pick the adult one. But we are gonna go with old character, and we are and we are gonna penalize the physique uh, here because we're not gonna need that much physique with this character, and I soon explain you why. Okay, and then. And then we select the archetype of our character. Archetypes are basically the playable classes in the game, if you will. I'm not gonna go through all of all of these in great detail, but but for example, there is a, there's ac academic, and the, and they specialize in medicine, psychology, and science skills, uh, and and they can be improved to the maximum level. 
So, so for example, you could make a very, very smart criminal who also knows a, a lot about medicine, who also knows knows a, a lot about medicine, psychology, and whatnot. But they can never be as uh, good or talented as academics can. And then we can also select select the background. Uh, the scientist in this case is the default one, and and this one doesn't really come with any uh, perks of any kind. Uh, but, but these other three do come with perks, both positive and negative. And researcher, for example, gives uh, faster scientific and medical research, but gives minus one phys physical defense. Yeah, I'm not gonna go through all all of them, but yeah. Then we got our aristocrat here, and aristocrat is, is one of the most interesting archetypes to me because aristocrat uh, st start they start the game with their own loyal uh, butler as their companion at the start of the game. So that's very interesting in my opinion. And Ar Aristocrat actually was one of the three options that I gave in my character uh, poll, but but the winner was the Explorer. Uh, and we are going to talk about more the Explorer in a bit. But yeah, Aristocrat, they specialize in occult, science and speechcraft. Although I believe that... I, did, I think I read from somewhere that speechcraft is perhaps the uh, most useless uh, skill to have in the game. Then we got criminal, uh, you know, your gunslinging uh, thief type of character. And then we got the explorer, and, and we are gonna play as this archetype. Then we got investigator, very typical archetype in Lovecraft stories. And they, of course, specialize in investigation, firearms, and psychology. Then we got occultist. So, so if so, if you really want to dive deep into the occult and uh, and different sort of spells and rituals that they can do, then you pick the uh, occultist. Then we got a performer here, another very interesting one in my opinion, and they specialize in athletics, speechcraft and stealth. And then we got soldier. So if you really want to play through this game with guns blazing and also be very tanky and tough at the same time, then you pick soldier. But yeah, we are gonna go with explorer. And we specialize in athletics, firearms and survival. And we are gonna pick the big game hunter, a background. But let's see what other options we have here. We got Pathfinder that lower lower chance of random combat encounters, but also lowers our inventory capacity. So basically we carry less items. Then we got Mountaineer that gives us plus one athletics, but minus two critical success chance. We're gonna go with big game hunter, which give us higher damage to beastly enemies. I don't know how many beastly enemies this game will have. I believe that Ghoul is is uh, is considered as a beastly enemy, but we'll see. So I don't know how useful this is, but I guess we'll see. And we also suffer a minus one to melee attacks, but that's completely fine by me because the idea for our explorer is to be a sniper. He likes to use his hunting gun here to to snipe the enemies from far away. So so we are going to improve his skill in skills in firearms while also punishing. Uh, his uh, his melee combat skills, and that's why I gave the penalty to the uh, physique because we don't really need physique with this character. He's not supposed to be melee range anyway. And besides, the explorer starts with a loyal hunting dog companion, whose name is going to be Winston, I believe. So yeah, so so if some enemies do get close to us, Winston can come to our rescue, and we can also recruit another companion. Uh, to our party, so they can also help us out in melee combat, if it comes to that. But yeah, so Explorer and Big Game Hunter. And then we got Belief System, because since this is a Lovecraftian Cthulhu a role-playing game, of course there has to be a sanity system of some kind, because going insane is a theme in Lovecraft stories, and there's many ways that how you can gain sanity in this game. So there is humanistic approach, through history, mankind has survived countless threats. If we stop wringing our hands and start cooperating, we will live to see the human spirit prevail once more. So that's very optimistic. Extra sanity can be gained by selecting humanistic dialogue choices and committing acts of altruism. Then we got materialistic. If you're all doomed, let's make our final days worth a while. Wealth, lust, power, pursue whatever eases your pain. Extra sanity can be gained by selecting materialistic dialogue choices through material gain and acts of self-indulgence. Then we got nihilistic. At last, there is no doubt that human beings are of no significance in the cold machinations of the cosmos. Thus, every action is of equal importance and worthlessness, just as it has always been. Extra sanity can be gained by nihilistic dialogue choices, 
A nihilist cannot gain sanity through her actions, but begins the game with higher mental resistance. Okay, so a nihilist basically does not go insane as rapidly as all the other characters with different belief systems. Okay. Then we got Divine, and we are gonna choose this for our explorer, because I like to think that our uh, big game hunter likes to think of himself as a Christian crusader type of character, who shoots down all the heretics and the monstrosities from hell. So that's why he's a very devoted uh, Christian holy warrior. That's how he likes to think of himself anyway, so we are gonna pick this. Then we got Rational. No matter how unusual or baffling, no phenomenon is beyond the boundaries of science and rational thought. There has to be an explanation. What must be done is to search and find it. Extra sanity can be gained by selecting rational dialogue choices and through scientific and medical research. Science or medicine skill recommended, obviously. And lastly we got esoteric. When supernatural becomes natural, the only path is to embrace the knowledge of the ancient forces behind the veil. We must tap into the hidden arts and realize our potential in order to survive, and eventually dominate. Extra sanity can be gained by selecting esoteric dialogue choices and through occult research. Occult skill recommended, obviously. But yeah, we're gonna go with divine. Okay, and then we uh, then we pick our character's portrait and name. And ob obviously we're gonna go with this because, well, it's most, most appropriate for this archetype, I think. We're in a safari hat and outfit and everything. And actually our character will have a safari helmet and and jacket and everything, so yeah, we are gonna pick this, and the name is going to be Absalom Cunningham. Absalom Cunningham. Okay, and then stat distribution. So as you can see, our physique is quite low already, because we gave the penalty to it earlier. And we are gonna pick agility, because it's frequently used with firearms. So we are gonna invest two points to this. Then senses, also frequently used with firearms, so we are gonna uh, add some points to this. Eight, I think that I think that's quite high. And also survival skills as well, which I think is also going to be rather important for our, for an explorer. Then we got mind, and we got will as well. And then we got presence, that determines your character's attractiveness, charisma, as well as personal charm, and is frequently used with speechcraft skill, which again is said to be the uh, one of the worst, if not the worst, skill to invest to. So I'm gonna take one point from this, because I don't really care if our character is not that attractive looking to the to other people. And we're gonna invest it to... Mm, I'm gonna invest it to Will. Yeah, I'm gonna invest all the points to Will here. That looks good. And then skills. Well, the game is recommending athletics, firearms, and survival. And I think I'm just gonna I think I'm just gonna do what the game basically recommends me to and put two points here, two points to firearms, two points to survival, and one more point to medicine. I think that's quite uh, uh, useful to have. Okay, I think everything looks good, so yeah, let's move on. And yeah, I think, I think I'm gonna go with this, so now let's finally start the actual game. Venturing into Attic. Left click on your portrait in the exploration screen to focus the camera on your character. Okay. A year has passed since your encounter with that peculiar fellow, known as a dismal man. When you last met, he instructed you, Find me beyond Arkham, after the Black Day. At the time, these words did not mean much to you, but soon after you would come to understand. On what is now known as the Black Day, under the shadow of the Awakened, the world you knew wa vanished, and with it your hopes, future and loved ones. For reasons unknown, the city of Arkham was separated from the carcass of Earth and, ex and exiled to the other place under alien stars, a twilight realm between dimensions. Unlike many others, you survived, body and mind mostly intact. Ever since, you have existed from day to day in the grey gloom of the old eel house, waiting for the enigmatic man to call. A man whose very existence you are now beginning to question. 
until you wake into another layer of the nightmare, until the visit at the old attic. Also, do, do let me know if you want me to adjust the volumes. So that's the dismal man. So this part was in the demo as well, so I know, I know like the first one or two hours of the game, I think. So we are gonna go and pick up this lantern here. We can't open uh, this chest just yet. And then we just move the lantern here. What is this? Survival recipe, Molotov cocktail and mystery meat. Okay, empty kerosene canister and kerosene canister. Alright, let me check the volumes real quick. Master volume 60, yeah. I just made sure that it, that it was saved. But yeah, if you want me to adjust the volumes, do let me know in the comments. And we just keep following the dismal man. I was also thinking that maybe it's possible that that it, that the dismal man is actually near Lepothep. That would be quite a twist. By the way, I really dig these graphics. Really dig the art style here. Hmm. Now ah, look at that. Spooky skeletons. Maybe I should have saved this Let's Play for October because, you know, Halloween. Oh, well, that's not good. There we go. That was the f that was the white flash when the game froze every single time. And there's our doggo. And we immediately lost 15 sanity at the start of the game. Awesome. Great start. Okay, so that's our dog. Companion joined Winston. Conversation request Winston. Okay, well, let's talk to Winston. Your loyal and endearing companion. Winston is perhaps the only creature who's, uh, unper who's unperturbed by the bedlam that stirs Arkham. And that is if you don't count the increase in the quantity and severity of his creep snarls and vicious barks at things seen and unseen. Winston has been an ever so reliable partner to you since the times when you were running for your life, running for your dear life in the deep jungles of Congo. Since then, his dislike for strange, uncanny beings has not lessened, but if anything, it only increased. Yeah, who's a good boy? Pet him. You are a good boy, you have always been a good boy. Feeling content and pampered, he sticks his tongue out in joy while you pet and play with him. Ultimately making sure he doesn't have unwanted visitors burrowing through his fur. Feeling appreciated and valued, Winston shakes his tail happily. Okay, let's end it there. Okay, and now we can open this chest here. And take all of our stuff out. So let's see, what do we got here? So we got these recipes, which I believe that, I believe that we can learn or study. Yes, we can. So now we know how to make Molotov cocktails, that's great. And then we can now cook some mystery meat. Okay, so let's put our gear on. A pit helmet up oh, here. A pit helmet. Safari jacket. And of course our trusty Feral 270 rifle. Yeah, look at that. Nice. And we got, and we got ten, uh, ten bullets for that, so not many. 
and these are camping supplies. A complete kit of camping supplies for outdoor living. Rations, okay, so some food, bandages, blank notebook. A hardcover notebook, currently blank, okay. And safari license. A certificate of competence for people working in the field in Africa. Makes sense, considering that he is an explorer. Bottle of clean water, okay. And then we got 200 cigarettes, because uh, because money is basic, uh, basically worthless in the in Arkham right now. The the on, the only the only thing that the only things besides food and weapons, of course, and stuff. So besides uh, besides those, the only other things that have any value are cigarettes. So that's basically the currency now in the game. Okay, let me let's let's move the cigarettes there, that there. I like to keep my inventory somewhat organized. Go there. There we go. Okay, just checking what we have here. A uh, grimoire. So basic. So we got. So we can have our spells and rituals and whatnot here. But because we. But because we don't know any. Uh, because we don't have any occult knowledge. Then I don't. Then this is not really relevant to us. At least not yet. Maybe when we get a companion who does know some occult uh, knowledge and know some spells, then this might become more relevant to us. Then we got a map of Arkham, Miskatonic University, Main Street, River, Riverside, that's where we are apparently. French Hill. And what's this Arkham map? Ah, oh, it, it's a bigger map. Okay. Okie dokie, and journal. The footsteps of the dismal man. A year ago I met a mysterious gentleman. I can recall little about him but his name, the dismal man. He knew about the Black Day and also the fact that I would be in Arkham. He told me to find him. Who is he? Does he have answers? Um, general notes, nothing. Okay. What are these? No entities discovered yet. Okay. So, inspect the entrance to Miskatonic University. Ah, good old Miskatonic University. The last spot I saw the dismal man in my dream was by the gates of Miskatonic University. Perhaps I should take a closer look. Okay, we'll do that eventually. And press F1 to learn the controls. Well, might as well check them out real quick, even though I do know them already. Combat help screen. Yeah, okay, that's out of the way. Now, anything else that I can do here before we move on? These decayed fragments of furniture betray the craft craftsmanship of talented carpenters. How heartbreaking to see their fine work reduced to a pile of scrap. In the gaps between the en encroaching vein root, this grimy window offers a glimpse of the dark, dismal street below. Anything else? No, we can't pick up anything else either, I don't think. Yeah. Let's just go downstairs. Oh, I didn't want to click on him, but... Play with Winston? Hmm. Yeah, might as well pet him some more, because he's a good boy. Winston is affectionate towards your interest in him. His eyes innocently glance at you. He's calm and content. Okay, not now, Winston. Your master is busy. Winston turns away, seeking other distractions. Okay, let's go downstairs. Now this place looks a lot more lively. Uh, we got a black guy playing a saxophone. People talking and talking and chatting. People smoking. One playing darts. The barkeep, of course. A wilted tourism advertisement from Marino's hometown in northern Italy. He will never again feel the cool Adriatic breeze. The barrels now serving as primitive tables still reek of stale alcohol and a, and a damp, woody stench that makes your nose itch. Can I... No, he's too busy playing. Okay, fine. What about you two? If you'll excuse me. I don't have time for this. Hey, Jesus. How about you? I don't have time for this. I'm not interested. Well, okay, fine. 
in better times, this gramophone built by the Denison uh, Corporation had spawned the newest and best medium of audio technology, the vinyl disc. What's on the menu? The cook is dead. Well, shit, what do they eat now? Only serving cans. Oh, oh, damn it, I didn't want to click you, Winston. Sorry, no. Sorry, but not now, Winston. Maybe later. I'll pet you later. These unfortunate uh, taxidermined fish are entrapped in timelessness, displaying a total contrast with the freedom they once had in Miskatonic and other neighboring rivers. Okay. Going by the labels, the shelves at first seem to be stocked with several different exotic liquors, but the bottles all contain the same cheap rotgut marino buys from the mob. If you'll excuse me, okay, he doesn't want to talk either. How about the barkeep? Our humble host. You see Marino, the manager and bartender of the old eel. He's, he's been your host for almost a year now, charging, charging in exchange the last of your precious resources. He has a tendency to suck you dry whenever he gets the opportunity. Sounds like a scumbag. Good morning, Cornuto. If, if, can, if you can call this never-ending fucking twilight morning. What was all that hurly-burly upstairs? Bad dreams? You could say that. Can you separate dream from reality anymore? It's nothing that concerns you. Well, you could say that, I suppose. Why am I not surprised? I recommend hitting the bottle before going to sleep. Makes things easier. Since you're awake, let's talk about the six you owe me. You were too drunk to pay yesterday and told me to remind you later, remember? Something tells me that he's lying. I didn't drink yesterday, Marino. Yeah, our character our character, character doesn't drink. This trick is getting old, Marino. Really? Did I drink that much? How much do I own you? Nah, screw that. I didn't drink yesterday, Marino. Don't, don't try to fool us. But I'm sure you did. Don't you trust your giving host, Cornuto? Where would you be now if I hadn't ac accommodated you? I pay for your accommodations, however poor they may be. Giving? I thought I'm the one who's been given. You'll, ha you'll have all my sick soon. Why the hurry? I pay for your accommo uh, accommodations, however, however poor they may be. Poor? I guess my rather poor services are still much better than being eaten by ghouls in a dark corner of a street, Cornuto. They eat you alive, you know. Anyway, since you are since you are a regular, and I'll pr and I'll probably take all your six anyway. Consider this on consider this one on the house. Oh really? Thank you so thank you for your generosity. You are really you are a really good example of how low uh, how lo low a person can go. Yeah. Oh, please, spare me your sharp wit. Later, Cornuto. Okay, I guess there's nothing else that we can really do here. No one else... Oh, yeah. I forgot about this guy. You see an eccentric middle-aged man completely focused on the darts game. He alone is playing. Exaltation all but radiates from this odd fellow. Exaltation. Not, not sure what that means. Ke care for a game of cricket? You don't get a chance to play against the world champion every day. He passes several of his darts to you. Well, I guess it's easy. I guess it's easy for you to for you to call yourself a world champ. Well, when 99% of all the population of Earth is gone, most likely dead. World champion. Of course. Surprised? You have you have any clue what happened to the rest of the w w world? Knock knock. Anybody there? No one. Eh, good riddance. Throws a dart. Earth was a big pain in the butt anyway. Here, there is only one champion, Herschel, the master of darts. Throws another dart at the board. This makes me the world darts champion. Ready for the game now? Well, it's the prize. Prize? Nothing can come close to the thrill of the darts. Tobacco? Rubbish. But feeling the texture of the stem in your hand, the steel point savagely penetrating the board, it's priceless. And the price? You want cigarettes? Beat me then. Beat the world champion and you'll have more cigarettes than you'll uh, ever want. You see, I was a traveling salesman for Tom Rogers cigarettes. Ah, oh, so you must be filthy rich then, as far as cigarettes are concerned. Before I found my true self and became the champion, damn those days. Herschel, go to Maine. Go to Boston. Herschel, 
Herschel, your sales performance is getting lower. We are disappointed, Herschel. I see. Where are they now? Ha! Huh, dissatisfied bastard. Uh, draws a dart. The old Herschel is the old Herschel is gone with them. Draws another one. There is only the champion now. Another one. The ch 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 champion. Okay, let's play. Now you are to talking. He starts to tell you the rules of the game with rather with rather too much enthusiasm. Test your skills in a game of darts with Herschel Athletics. Let's see how this goes. And the last round. What? No, oh, I guess we won. I'm actually a bit surprised. I know we are, I know we are a good I know that we are a good shot with a rifle, but I wasn't I, I wasn't I wasn't expecting to win in a darts game necessarily. Herschel looks as as if he is stripped from all purpose. Glancing at his expressionless expressionless eyes, you feel like you are gazing right into the abyss. He starts to talk slowly. Cheater! I didn't cheat. May I have my six now? Face it, Herschel, you lost. I didn't cheat. Cheater! Oh, come on. It seems I'm the new world champion then. Cheater, 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 cheater. With each repetition, his speech starts to sound less and less rational until it turns into a frenzied howl. Cheater! I guess he's turning into a ghoul now. Ouch! Jesus Christ, dude! Well, we got some XP from that, that's great. We lost like one or two hit points there. But at least he dropped his cigarettes. How much did we get? 40 cigarettes, that's pretty good. Okay, so... I guess we are done here. The game of darts is a common fi uh, fixture in New England pubs, having been passed down with settlers from Great Britain. However, its popularity here is in decline ever since Herschel discovered a new favorite pastime. Well, I don't think that Herschel is... Uh, uh, I don't think that Herschel will ever be coming back here to play anymore. Hell, maybe we even run into him when he's a ghoul, and we just shoot him. But now, let's leave the old deal house. Okay, like I said, I really, really like this art style. At first I wasn't a huge fan, to be honest with you, but over time I grew to like it more and more. This really fits, uh, fits a Lovecraftian style. Hmm. Okay. We can take all this stuff. Got some cigarettes, empty bottles that we can use to make co Molotov cocktails, I take it. Leather uh, strips, not sure if that's gonna be... Well, maybe we can use that for something, so maybe I should not uh, try and sell it. This signboard carries the prohibitory insignia of Wax Face and secures this establishment as, as a property of the mob. Okay. Hello, dude. You see a typical Arkham resident, tired and decrepit, look at, and decrepit looking. He looks at you uneasily. Mm, yeah, uh, we're not gonna give him a sec. What's the what's state intact in this part of town? Not much, as you can see. There is the old eel house if you're looking for a few drinks and a roof over your head. And if you're planning to numb yourself, Richter's drugstore is in uh, is the place. You'll be fine if you stay away from the Marsh warehouse, and I'm sure you know better than to hang around near the grandfather altar. Grandfather altar. Well, tell me about the old eel house. The old eel uh, was a shady place even before the Black Day. We have been hearing that the owner Marino has some connections with the Mafia in the West. The bar took the disguise of a restaurant when the pro uh, prohibition came. So, ban of alcohol. As you can guess, there is no need for that anymore. You can rent a bed or let's say a dirty mattress in the attic if you don't have a place to go and get some moonshine from the bar below. Well, what about Richter's uh, drugstore? That slimy bastard old Richter runs the old, only remaining pharmacy in Arkham, but don't be fooled, his business is not medicine, he deals drugs. 
well, that's why it's called truck store, right? Richter produces, mixes, and of course sells all kinds of trucks to anyone interested in a small es escape it, escape it. How do you spell that? Escape it, escape it from this nightmare. He is valuable to the mob, and he knows it. There's been some ugly rumors about him for some time now. What kind of rumors? Uh, rumors of him taking advantage of his regular customers and sort. Dreadful stuff. Okay, and what about the warehouse? I know that I know that it used to be run by the Marsh family of Innsmouth. Ah, Marsh family. Uh, I do remember that main. Uh, I do remember that name from the story, from the Shadow over Innsmouth. Uh, we uh, we would uh, we had been hearing that the place was being used for uh, bootlegging and sorts. Only ghouls occupy it now. Beasts that rent flesh from your bones. Okay, so. It's not, it's not a very good idea to go in there, unless we have to for whatever reason. What do you know about the marshes? Not much. I know that they I know that they are the ruling family of Innsmouth. They, their great-grandfather, Opet Marsh, was an, was an important figure in the town's past, I reckon. Reclusive, weird, weird folk, these Innsmouthians. Well, I'm quite sure that they are all now gone. I don't, I don't think that Innsmouth survive. I don't think that Innsmouth survived through the Black Day. Only Arkham. So what are these ghouls you mentioned? Never seen one with my own eyes, but I have seen what they can do to people. They say they are dog-like demons, feral parodies of men. They creep out they creep out of the dark to prey upon us. You can hear their eerie howls throughout Arkham. Okay, well thanks for telling us. If it's your last, uh tell me about the mob. He looks around in fear. The mob is the law. The mob has taught you well, I see. Let's not talk about these things. Well, okay, how did they gain, gain power? All legal authority was buried in the ruins of uh, on the Black Day. Every one of Arkham's leading citizens, Mayor Anderson, Chief of Police Constance, Father Grayson, vanished. The mob took the streets. They brought, he gulps, Order of, of sort back to Arkham. Tyranny, you mean? Now, if you'll excuse me. Okay, well, fine, he doesn't. Wish they would let me inside. We can talk to someone, someone else too. Mob is the law. Run along now. Okay, I guess we, guess we can talk to these two who works as bouncers of the old eel house. Fine. Ah, and look at that. Who does who does this remind you of? I wonder. This towering depiction of one of the elder elder gods perches atop the naked base of a shattered statue. By toppling down the statue of President Lincoln, the people of Arkham have chosen fear over liberty, surrendering their future to subjugation and rule of the mob. Now let's talk this woman next. You see a typical Arkham resident, tired and decrepit looking. She looks at you uneasily. What is that grotesque monument over there? The cult erected it in place of the old Lincoln statue. Grandfather Altar, they call it. Okay, so that's called Grandfather Altar. Damned, damned atrocity. Cultists come from across the river to sacrifice people who have been marked by the mob. Okay, so the mob and the cultists are working together. Somewhat, by the looks of things. Blood offerings to Grandfather Cthulhu. Hmm. Yeah, Cthulhu. Cthulhu? Even the name freezes my blood. The Grandfather, they call him. Their new god who was awakened on the Black Day with its brethren, the Great Old Ones. <coughs> Excuse me. The fanatics of the cult torture, su uh, sacrifice and kill in their names. There is only one god. Those heretics are worshipping demons from hell. Now if, you, now if you'll excuse me. And because we chose a, a divine dialogue option, we got some sanity back. That's great. Tell me about the mob. Uh, not, not the mob, the cult. Mad fanatics who devoted themselves to Cthulhu and the other old ones. They rule the, nor the, ru they rule the ruins of North Arkham across the Miskatonic River. 
The cult comes to this side of the river either to find new blood for their ranks or new victims to be sacrificed in their rites. I'm not sure which is worse. Well, being sacrificed, I would imagine, is worse. Well, how can I get how can I get to the other side of the river? I don't recommend it. There are things lurking in the water. Only the cult can pass the river at will, but I have no idea how. Sometimes you can see their boats on Miskatonic, all painted red, crimson omens of doom. Another thing. What do you know about the Black Day? Nothing more than you, I guess. We had all seen the signs, right? People having the same nightmares, the mysterious disappearances, whole families massacred. We saw it coming, but pretended everything was fine. The Black Day started with that, with that, with that apocalyptic roar. Piercing deep into our minds, the sky melting, colors fading. I, I can't remember anything else. Tears come to her eyes. That must have been Cthulhu who woke up. And please continue. Yeah, please continue. When we came to our senses, Arkham lay beneath an alien sky, banished from our home forever. We are all alone. Uh, we are alone, all alone in this purgatory. Left to the mercy of tyrants and defiance. She bursts into tears. Aww. It gives me the creeps. Yeah, this statue also gives me the creeps. Okay, uh, I think we should look around a bit, bit more. Try to find any stuff that we can pick up. Like from here, from this pile. A couple cigarettes, okay. What are you doing? We don't have much time left. I think our time uh, ran out a long time ago, miss. What do we have here? You see a skinny woman wearing heavy makeup. Her uh, pro pro provocative outfit emphasizes how she earns her living in Arkham. Ah, so she's a hooker, okay. She moves like a person drugged or drunk. Oh, hi, darling. Her words are welcoming, her excitement feigned. Interested in a good time? Sure, I could use some relief, it depends, no thanks. Leave me be, sinner! Oh, come on, beat it, Mr. Grundy. And we got some more sanity back, nice. Anything here? Oh, there's a pile here. Hmm, lockpicks, that might become useful, even though our character is not that skilled in subterfuge. And test tube. Okay. And there's the Richter's drugstore, but I'm not gonna go in there and, uh, right now. We have no reason to. I need to get my fix. I need to get my fix. What do we have here? Empty syringes and some cigarettes. Okay. Oh, look at that. There. Yeah, there's some. There is something in the water. How the hell are we gonna get across that? Yeah, tentacles. Of course, there's tentacles, too. Save for the choking vines on every wall, this humble residence is one of the few that remains untouched by the destruction that has engulfed Arkham. Okay. Have I picked up everything that I can? Is there anything else that I can pick up? Anything else that I can pick up? We could go to the right as well, but we are gonna go to the left first. Did I? Yeah, I think I. Uh, I think I searched this one, and this is uh, Marsh and Sons Imports Warehouse. So this is the one with the ghouls inside it. So let's avoid that place for now. Okay, well, so we have gained, let's see, we have gained some sanity back, we lost 15 sanity at the start of the game because of the dream, and we have gained, have we gained 6 sanity back in total? That's pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, well, let's try and talk to this guy for, uh, first before we move on. You see a typical Arkham resident, okay, the same thing. Excuse me, I would like to ask you something, if we got any new dialogue options. Leave me alone, sir. Life is hard enough without a bunch of foolish questions. How do you survive in Arkham? 
between the mob and the cult you mean? I don't know, because so far, because so far someone else got uh, crushed instead of me. Anyway, I doubt my luck will last much longer since the black day. I have, I have thought every day would be my last. We survive because it is God's will, not chance. Yes, all right. Can I go now? Well, yeah, sure. Okay, we got nine. Uh, we have got nine sanity pack. Okay, well, let's move on. And I think I'm gonna end the... Now, uh, go there, please. Okay, so I think I'm gonna end the episode here, actually. And in the next episode, let's explore more of Arkham. What's left of it, anyway. Talk to more, more to the locals. And then investigate the... Uh, the, uh, these gates leading to Miskatonic University, although it looks like that the ways that the path is blocked be uh, to, uh, thanks to this rubble here, so we may have to find another way to to get to get to the other side of the wall here to get to the university. But yeah, until next time. Thank you for watching, and see you next time for more Stitchian Reign of the Old Ones.